So welcome everybody here to the Martin E. Siegel Theater Center, the Graduate Center CUNY. My name is Frank Henschke and I'm the director of the Siegel Center. Welcome back. We are thrilled to be back online and live after almost three and a half years where we were closed. We only opened um, last uh, um, uh, summer. And it's a great pleasure to have an evening here dedicated to the work of the great Elfriede Jelinek. This is our fourth evening with her. We did Sickness, Modern Woman, the Racknitz event, the We Shoot the Tramp, a piece she created so beautifully here. So we feel a strong um, connection um, to her. And uh, it, this seems to be also the season for the Nobel Prize winners. We have the Jan Fosse event, also the great Norwegian writer who we also did readings here. We will do it May 6th. Uh, a full day of readings of five plays in translation by Sarah Cameron Sunde. Um, um, here is a marathon reading to also um, highlight his work. Um, so um, we have with us tonight the translator, Gita Honecker. So a big applause, great worker. We have Thea here, the director of the play. And the great Helga Davis also here with us. And um, so the evening will not last longer than an hour, hour 15 minutes. We're gonna uh, have an introduction uh, from uh, uh, Gita about the work a little bit. We're gonna see the performance uh, from Helga, uh, an excerpt of the play. Then there will be a five or seven minute uh, reading from Jelinek herself. We, she created a video for us. She's very excited that this event is happening here, that her work is being recognized and also shown also in the theat theatrical context, in a performative uh, context. So it means a lot to us that you heard. And of course, we have here Pavel and Kelly with us. We screened this afternoon their great epic work, um, The Kinder der Toten, The Children of the Dead, where they engaged for over three years, three and a half years, in creating with the community in the landscape where Jelinek was born, an, 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 an engagement with the text where the audience in performing it um, also non-professional uh, actors, a lot of them um, are actually um, engaged in creating the work instead of reading it. It's actually a silent movie, stunningly enough, and everybody who knows Jelinek's work, uh, this is just a, uh, just a brilliant idea, and Gita was also uh, instrumental in connecting them, and um, they worked at an early um, translation. So if you have a cell phone, maybe just take it out and switch it off, have a laugh and double check. That that works, that it's off, silent. And um, here you go, maybe tell us a little bit, what is this work all about? And tell us maybe shortly about Elfriede for those who might not know. And we welcome all our viewers on HowlRound who are here with us uh, nationally and internationally. Thank you. Well, thank you for coming. It's like a family up there. <laughs> Elfriede is thrilled. And I, I warn you, I mean, you don't get the part when we translated, when I was on page 400, she told me, you know, you're gonna go crazy. It's gonna get worse and worse and worse. <laughs> and it's kind of a warning that this is not escapist literature. And some is hard to take to me too, because anyway, uh, what I'm most, I don't know, did you see the film? What I'm most thrilled uh, is that since the piece is so much about the undead, especially of the Holocaust, returning and the, the victims and the perpetrators and taking their crazy revenge. It is so, I can read this totally in the context of Israel and Gaza. It, oh, I thought, really? <laughs> this is a, an undead voice. <laughs> anyway, Elfriede, you most probably know the piano player. Uh, and she's not easy to translate. And uh, people in Europe compare her to uh, Finnegan's Wake, uh, this, particularly this work. Um, I ask myself sometimes, why am I doing this? But it is really important to me, coming from the same generation, Austrian, to deal with our history. And so to me, every time she writes something, it is, it is so topical and so painfully topical. And what she does with language, since we are from the country of Wittgenstein, uh, we are obsessed about the language of guilt. That's what we grew up uh, with, so that's actually my incentive. Now, those of you, of you who saw the movie, that was about one of the women, and you could say that Elfriede is in both of the women 
you will see the other woman who is a philosopher student. I don't know, you both probably had no time to read the book because it just came out. Uh, <laughs> uh, and she's, a, of course, a Heidegger, Heideggerian student. So there are a lot of references to Heidegger and to the gnosis. So when you translate her, you always, um, when, when it's strange language, it's either gnosis or Heidegger. Uh, and then there come all the other crazy references. I think that's all I, and uh, yes, yes, I picked the two, the two pieces you're gonna see. One is her more, how she deals with sex in a very weird humorous way, but it always, the, the Holocaust always creeps up and the, the brutality of it. Uh, so it's funny in a way. It's also, yeah, it's funny. And the second is very short, and that's about the landscape and that whole weird undead atmosphere in, in, in the whole book and in all her writings. So that's basically, and she's very excited. She wants to greet everybody. And at the end, the, it, she never does that for anybody. She does it for me and for Thea, because Thea is Jackie. And the, so there's a big trust, like she trusts people who she has a kinship with. So. Enjoy and thank you, co conspirators. <laughs> the dark century view is turn along the sultry red light. So that either the unconscious body can quietly search around the inside of itself, or in case it wants to go to the brain center, it can get fired up by the pure ballpark screams of its human consciousness that finds itself quite interesting in that story. No. Inside the room, there is nothing but darkness. But outside, the warning light is on. May sleep not abuse people under our and the door to the cell should not simply be thrown open just because some pity, because something pity was discovered there to adorn the cell with the name of the cell. It's your dream of death. The photos with all the experiences imprinted on them as bright sparks in a shadow. sent into the field to start learning the truth. They might be deployed later or maybe not, but the brain had almost always been conscious before. Good dreams should be dreams of the heart. Something that tires the dream, but that infernal fire seems to be quite painful beyond the auditory pathway. Something that settles you still has It reveals a nameless from a book, though there is nothing but a fear in the book. This pain waits for the name, but the cell has the cell. Next time, may we see. Then, with a key she found in her natural fiber pack, she unlocks the door to the room she suddenly finds herself standing in. She does not know She is probably inside when the door bangs against her ribs. Someone with a fiber seems to push his way in. Someone who is even more in a hurry to get in than she. But there is a door. He threw himself against the door. Inside, everything seems unfamiliar and as well. Even though she seems to love Dead with the cup of linen. The somewhat older Ambroise, which seems to come from the stock of another pyramid on the Turkey continent, sleeps a masked figure in the cell. Though the peasant sometimes jokes out of people's mouths, it no longer surrounds them, or it just serves the ghost of the original. 
get to meet and see the pastor's speech about the Lord's Supper, to still have the opportunity to stand here as a Christian and discuss it. It is a statement Paul makes to test them themselves to say how few of them are actually in Christ. The farmer may use not even his cup long enough for the sake of special beer cup. Take a look at it, see that it is still tempered in its own way. So that the arriving guest, like a God demanding overly high standards on his subject, won't spiritually flee from his presence. Meticulous order in this room, at least temporarily. Reaching the ocean to unwrap no record, no secret. But you have to see, apparently, keeping it together at least once a month. He steps in here, but there is no trace of her presence, as if she had been changed out or shrink that she had took over the morning. The vast crowd is again just the church. This tour of the bathroom is in the hallway, which makes the Christ so unique. She mostly says to you. The church looks down on the in. The church looks up at the church. Vivian takes her tattered book from her bag and puts it on the table, this. The church looks at you. Vivian the same for a while. Then she smiles at my wife. The same smile for a while. Nobody noticed she had a new leader. The young woman stands in the middle of the room, a stranger, not just a friend. mirror above the table, the glance instantly puts itself around her face, and she's not getting rid of it. She has no right to just get away with the book. She knows that. After all, she could enclose only herself in her embarrassment. She didn't even be here. She only escaped someone in her embarrassment. She only escaped herself in her embarrassment. She shouldn't even be here. She escaped someone in an unmarked place whom she owed to know. She did not belong here. Since the last time she disappeared so quickly, she couldn't even say her name. The kind of advances, the furnishing bill in this place, which you asked her to not allow them. She should elude the object stolen. The arrival of something that is neither present nor to come, it is past, and yet coming. Words can be milestones, and not unlike the weather, they are difficult to avoid. And yet, maybe the vision is part of this time. I feel that so that the horrible moment that threatened foreign distance. She does not lose sight of what her name is. Ah, but a few women friends from the university can tell her something happened to her. She has no way to tell her how far they have fled from her destruction. And no idea how close things are being kept back that this woman is lying to. She is here to help me. And yet she is. No vision for her this morning. No answer to my prayer or go to the answer. Reaching close to God, just this time again, this time again, then out again, then undecided, sitting down again, and unsure of what step of herself, she is not quite sure that she is in here. What kind of relationship with her own presence? 
Are these two answers something only the Bible Caesar would know? But men would allow the Bible to them to worship and keep in token. The dangerous men of all the powers were only the ideas of people would take the Bible. We have to be careful. Or make the worshippers no less than the God. The last thing left of the ark, God's memory, seems to be something like a fragment of a man in a tattered uniform with no hat or hair. Sometimes we are lucky enough to get a copy of the cigarette hanging. Sometimes they say that mom had it. Had I published a novel, they would say it's all about me. Because under the disapproving eye of this know-it-all woman, he copied it for us in others, dishing the Pharisees' pairs of eyes and ripped teeth, beaming in the light of happiness, embraced each other lovingly, had shown a round vomit of language with much less concern than she between that pithy church woman, can now hear very clearly a sound coming from the house. Imagine how it could be better or worse, for after the loss of memory, if your tender body might also go. And so, you kind of wave at it, but at the same time, you are still standing still looking for it to touch you and touch you. And it will definitely come to touch you. And still, you see pacing at the door, the wooden door in her heart also took and out of his mind. An existential hit. He took himself off the hit list also without her. He couldn't be found in time to touch the last seven seconds. Who are you with me? Why did you do this? As he bent over, stand in front of the hallway window so they can better hear God's story about a local town albeit with a cough from time to time. And this story of a young man with much hope by which his heart is broken, also seems to be telling his story. It would be funny. Sad, like a statue, too rotten to rot, had not yet been cut. Can't you see how the hope is broken? Let me know. Tell me if you're lost. seems to have fallen away. This man is not about to meet, at least not that way. Two withered, fleshy bodies anchored in the ground, a stand-in for a farmer's horseman who made all the right moves that far away country has not. The man shows himself in his fast, glowing livery, his disguise with his own hand in his ear, what do I see about you? You have me. You have us. It is incredible. This thing is not that. A disguise. Coincidence. Like any beauty, it does not come from a cosmetic palette. That would not be my style. I would never have thought that this was possible. Because of the lecture about my beautiful skin, something controls the mass from the center of his heart. 
where his heart was thrown in such trouble, three and six months, three and six months, three and six months, whether there would be an entrance to heaven since only God knew his heart was going to heaven. Something controlled that young man by the truth of his heart, that thing that came up from the to be taken in time when the wish to live wants to get things at the time of death. That man that turned out to be quite obvious with that intent with great fear going into heaven when God was still talking to him and then was real as I am coming to this place you have come to this place that you are going now to the place of heaven. It is no Accumulated inside had begun to move. Yeah. It started to grow. The badly mirrored load went. The lifeboat tilted in the waves. The precious cargo slipped back again. A few sheets of sail dropped, quite peeking over the top of the grid, gradually drying up, leaving behind an unnatural glow. Dusty hat, the gift of God, a flashy performance, perhaps. Could not complete his life. As if this man had put plenty of Vaseline all over himself from his pocket in his hand in order to end up his slide into the unknown from the bench where he had already been swimming for so long. So, this is everything after all the chemical black, dead, handsome young man pulled his clothes from his body just as he had They deduct from it as much as they can to show how impoverished they are. From three feet, it was six to the dead young man. It ran down one side. The excretions have all dried up by now, but this humpback whale, this disbelievable, that whale, that was actually the name of a beautiful thing, this arch manhood, a testament to his last. We are all waiting for it to come. To come up with something more than a name. With life itself that grows and the strength for us to continue. This is how we are to be. Our life is to be believed. But sometimes sadly, oh, that something was working on us all over. But we had just put down our modest number so we could wait for it and believe it that they were not working on us. But how much happens to you and I? Well, get to know to purple is blue. Oh, so the team sticks, sticks to everything everywhere, and it has dried up completely at the product of death, not unlike money and the world, which also belongs to the integrated team of death. An unmovable key. No more prayers need to be seen. He carries his hunting gun in his body. 
a territory that is only half awake from the deeds and thoughts of this hour. His heart is willing, willing to see any harm it wants to, but his honor shows no sign of emotion in his mouth. Thank you. His steps teach the dead man. So a man steps to who he chose to die with, but then women would also be asked to come to be found. Someone rose in a slowly expiring letter to the end. See, that's power. And amid all of that strength and the swarming flies, the young man's still life looks and works like power. He was running around as a dead man, frozen by death. Imagine having the right to take this dead man in your hands and examine it. Examine the frame between thumb, fore, and middle finger, a scroll like an early morning walk into death. For the diet process, the step from the deceased youth is also available for the deceased. Since it can no longer stop, death can feel free and stop now. Rather flies up because the police go up in a car and excavate the four meters and march to the blue light of the beach. And vague speculation says steps might even be so useless because they didn't notice them in their mind. They grapple with ideas, but they don't grasp them. When on earth did this landscape, already somewhat beclouded by terrorism, dream of Did the few hotels and vacation home owners think that the new hydrogen coming by the breezes that are roasting our backers in the campfire and fancy think they were touching the earth? The shadows of the very fractions are advancing only slightly to the earth. People are piling beyond the same height. Height is a power of the earth. Groups that pay the fractures every now come to a stop every Tuesday. They are supposed to stop speeding and deny the African and deny any personal things. And stop them and stop again. And the dinner says to Africa that he was right for a while and he was just like the guy there that he was right for a while. It's terribly enough Shadows continue to exist in Toronto still now. A stranger that maybe the tiny speck of the dust of the beach is is out there. And all the reflection that this step shadow makes even the very best photographer isn't out there, even when he looks for it. In the meantime, their souls have become strangers on earth without compensation.
Es wird über Baumstämme gestiegen. Could you go back to the very beginning? Could that take a moment? Es wird über Baumstämme gestiegen. Für manche Alte nassen schon genug der Anstrengung. Nicht stark hoch, weil die Polizei mit Eingang für schwache Leser extra groß und auch noch mit einem Blaulicht gekennzeichneten Pkw vorgefahren ist. Und vage Vermutungen werden von den Menschen geäußert, die sich nutzlos vorkommen, weil sie in der Nacht überhaupt nichts beobachtet haben. Sie ringen um Begriffe, aber sie begreifen nichts. Was hat diese vom Tourismus schon ein wenig angekleckerte Landschaft sich jetzt wieder für sie einfallen lassen? Ist es das, was sie hier unter Erlebnisurlaub verstehen? Haben sie paar Hoteliers und Ferienheimbesitzer ein neues Gesellschaftsspiel ersonnen, bei dem Kreise über dem Lagerfeuer der Ewigkeit, die sie sich irgendwie größer vorgestellt haben, wie Drahtäpfel geröstet werden? 
Die Schatten der Gehenden schieben sich heute nur zögernd voran. Menschen drängen sich am Eingang und fassen das Haus nicht an, in dem dies Schreckliche geschehen ist. Gruppen, die pauschal bezahlt haben, halten auch pauschal inne, berühren fachmännisch ein paar Blätter und leugnen den sauren Regen, da sie ja was gegen ihn in der Hand haben. Ein gebundenes Blatt, das mit dem Kopf wimmelt. Und die gute Erde, so beliebt, dass wir es ihr nicht gönnen, aus ihr haben manche Menschen Bachblüten gezupft, damit es ihnen wieder besser gehe. Es hat hier ein entsetzliches Ereignis stattgefunden, keine Frage. Schatten bestehen weiter, da die Glühbirnen immer noch funktionieren. Ein Steinbauer Lieferwagen ist, beladen mit Menschenzeug für die Caritas Gottes, die es später auseinandersortieren muss, wieder abgefahren. Aber dieser Tod hat alles verhüllt, sogar die Worte, die ihn galten. Es herrscht Unklarheit, wer die Opfer überhaupt waren. Ihre Seelen sind inzwischen Fremde auf Erden, die trotzdem nicht bezahlen müssen. Wie von einer Gottesanbeterinnenhand sollen die Toten zerfetzt gewesen sein. Ihrer besten Stücke hat man sie angeblich beraubt. Diese Röhrenknochen darf der Hund nicht kriegen. Überhaupt der Hund. Der hat sich mit gesträubten, sonderbar verfilzten Haar zusammengekrümmt und scheint auf keinen Lockruf zu hören. Es habe sich ein Ehepaar auf seinem Bettenrost unter Strom gesetzt und wie Geflügeltrümmer gegrillt, so lautet das Gerücht. Fleischstücke sind angeblich halb gar wie halb verdaute Brocken eines Erdrutsches in das Zimmer geworfen worden. Nach dem Datum auf der Verpackung sind diese beiden alten Leute noch gar nicht zum Verzehr vorgesehen gewesen. Wer also hat das Gestehensdatum geändert, das ihrem Leben die letzte Entschiedenheit gab? Und welche Geständnisse haben sie vorher noch wem gemacht? Plaudertaschen stehen in Gruppen und spucken, zu Mülltüten umgearbeitet, ihre Vermutungen über diesen eigenartigen Doppelselbstmord die selbst nur halb abgenagten Reste sind, hinein, hinter vorgehaltenen Händen. Dieser Tod bewirkt, dass die Menschen nicht mehr an sich halten können und sich, einer den anderen plötzlich scheuend, hoch aufbauen, damit sie ein wenig besser ihre Aussichten abschätzen können. Sie wollen entkommen, aber wie? Wie bunte Zierpolster nach einem Genickschlag so stehen sie beisammen, die Frauen ähnlich südlichen Hemisphären, in die man gern reist, wenn es hierzulande am dunkelsten und kältesten ist, die Männer krampfhaft versucht, ihre Furchtsamkeit für sich zu behalten, falls der Tod als nächstes an ihren schlechtesten Seiten zucken sollte. Brüder, komm! Nicht einmal in dieser äußersten Angst vor dem Tod wollen sie ihren Frauen etwas von sich preisgeben, denn die wollen immer gleich den Preis wissen. Die besten Stücke haben sie einander ohne dies längst gegenseitig in langen Jahren aus den Augen herausgepickt, wo diese am schwärzesten sind. Da muss sogar der Tod sich fügen und mit den Resten vor ihr gehen. Das Blut bewegt sich regelmäßig. Glasiger Schaum steigt von den Grundstücken dieser beiden Toten an die Oberfläche und nur die Gefühle werden noch unverdichtet von den Umständen geäußert, dass schwarzer Sirup über ihr Wohnen gegossen wurde. Unruhig scharen die Tiere mit den Hufen. Was jetzt? Manche, die man vorher hier noch nie gesehen hat, schweigen. Ihre Worte suchen noch nach den Unterkünften. Erst danach werden sie beruhigt wieder ausschwirren können. Gespräche weichen immer häufiger ab und nehmen die Umfahrung über das Wetter. Betreten wenden manche sich weg in die doch ohne dies niemand auch nur einen Fuß setzen würde. Dieser Gestank ist intensiv wie eine Herzensmeinung, der man Ausdruck verleiht. Wenn sie abgewiesen wird, muss der Hersteller sie wieder zurücknehmen. Die Zwillingssärge beben und schwanken, Schattenhaftes, das von zwei ihrer fesseln, ledigen Geschöpfen herrührt, sintert wie Rauch in dünnem Fluss unter den Zinkblechdeckeln hervor. Die neuen Toten haben nicht mehr die Qualität der Älteren, die von uns noch gründlichst abgeduscht worden sind. 
Aber dann haben uns verwandtschaftliche Gestalten gefehlt und wir mussten uns andere anfertigen, diesmal aber genau nach unserem Ebenbild. Doch was ist das? Die alten, traumatischen Menschen, die inzwischen ganz zur Luft geworden sind, wollen die Luftkoorte ihrer Heimat wieder erreichen? Hallo! Wir hören wohl den Morgenwecker von E3 und müssen jetzt nicht nur aufwachen, sondern von Neuem geboren werden. Der Sauerteig liegt uns in Gestalt von Millionen aufgetriebener Hefestückchen seit Jahrzehnten im Magen. Als hätte eine neu entstandene Macht den Gestorbenen die Fesseln abgenommen und sie büßen im Trog, im Scheffel, im Schaffel unter dem Scheffel. Doch dieses tote Paar sieht seine Wahrheit derzeit noch nicht. Es fehlt ihnen beiden eine Voraussetzung dafür, die Freiheit. Doch die scheinen sie nun gewinnen zu wollen, der ehemalige BDMer und der ehemalige Eingeweckte aus der stürmischen Staffel. Der Tod lässt sie los, er lässt sie von der langen Leine und die Rückholautomatik scheint zu klemmern. Das gemischte Doppeltier ist einfach nicht mehr einzuholen. Der ganze Tag mit seinem grellen Schein wartet nur noch darauf, dass dieses wilde Paar ins Freie versetzt ihm auch noch die ganze Sonne wegfließt. And um, since it's recorded on HowlRound, we have to use the microphone. For you. Good to see you. Let's move more up because it's too high. Take this one. Yep. Can you can you bring this one over? You can bring it more than normal. Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, maybe you both um, share one. So uh, first of all, um, I think um, a round of applause for Helga and Sophia for the words. Such a beautiful, quiet, and yet intense deep reading you know of a text that's so complex beautifully translated and really <coughs> both of you did not stand in front of it use the microphone if you say something okay. otherwise people won't hear helga you. has almost a similar uh, tone of voice a quiet as, as rita has yeah it's a quiet terror also in a way <laughs> um, um um what she does um <coughs> first um um Gita, uh, listening to, to your, is it the first time it was read? Um, the first time, yes, yes. Well, what what, what comes to your mind when you heard it? Uh, how well she's understood in, in speaking rather than in reading. Mm -hmm. There is a rhythm in there. When you have, <laughs> really, I don't yell out the window? <laughs> <laughs> you want it, I'll be your mic stand. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, what what did oh no it was it's really interesting to hear her read and and hear the music coming out even in a novel because she is she comes from the theater too and from music people who don't do music don't get her as they who don't have an ear and directors I attracted to her also in the theater uh, who understand music and that's from different from classical music. To, of course, pop, punk, everything. This is, I, I move my hand. She comes from the theater. Tell us a little bit. But she studied only one year, uh, uh, theater studies. And then she, uh, I think that's when she had also her first nervous breakdown. She's very, very 
delicate on the other hand, very tough, but her health is, uh, her nerves and her whole being is subtle and wired sometimes. Uh, so what did we talk about? About her history in theater. But yes, and uh, she is a very, in, in, in Germany, the best directors work with her and they make careers working with her. Just like Tina, the actress too, uh, here at, uh, when, when it was performed in New York. So people, you, well, the, do you either love her or you have totally no relationship to, you can't, you refuse that world. I think you have to really enter it very bravely. I have anecdotes, many, with, uh, her, her French director and, and she, they had over 6,000 emails. For me, it was very funny because the idiom, the idioms, of course, as a Viennese, I, I couldn't, I totally understood the subtext. And Viennese are very mean people. They will very charmingly tell you something and mean the opposite. Even Germans don't get it. The, she needs a translator for, for the Germans because there's so much Austrian allusions to it. And it's uh, one email was with the translator, she said, they discussed some sexual choreography. And he asked her because he wasn't quite sure. And she wrote back, he was very young, he was like 26. And she said, you, you, you poor man, you're so young and you have to deal with this. Uh, yeah, so it was, it was helpful for me too. And we, except that the interesting thing is, of course I knew the idioms, he, uh, he didn't get some of the illusions and she was very patient to both of us. To, to explain what she means. Helga, how, how was it for you speaking that text? I love this text. <laughs> she will love you. Yes. Why? Period. I love this text. Because it's, it's completely delirious, yeah. but it is also logical. It is, it's mean, it's funny, and it needs a lot of breath to get through it. So I was saying to Taya that I'm very happy that I sing because you really need your <laughs> lungs to get through the sentences so that you don't lose mm -hmm. the, the meaning of the words. I had a lot of fun. I'm only sorry I didn't have a year to memorize it because that really would have been fun. Do you know one of her directors who she loves, uh, he always does it, so it becomes irritating. He has the actors first read the text, then they tear it apart and throw it around. I think it's irris not respectful, actually. But she loves uh, broad comedy. That's, but her best director doesn't do that. And what did you struggle with when you were speaking? But why did you have to stop and work with the text? You mean just now? Yeah. Because no, no, not just oh. now. Not in general. When you when you went through in the rehearsals, what? I don't think there was really any struggle, except we would stop and laugh. We were laughing a lot. Tell us a little bit. You have you you directed Jackie. <laughs> Wasn't it funny? <laughs> see, I, I mean, see, you directed Jackie at the Women's Project uh, with a great production. Thank that you. Yeah. One of the great international productions thank in you. New York. Um, t tell us what is your relation to Yelena? Oh my God, I love her work. I'm obsessed. Um, I'm really obsessed. Um, what do I like about it? I like everything about it, but um, I like layers in her writing and I like how quickly she shifts from one subject to another, but, but how he actually, also how something that it shouldn't be funny, it is funny or how she goes quickly from different almost genres, if I may say. Um, but I like the musicality of her language. Um, I personally don't like linear writing. So for me, she's a special writer and artist that I really deeply, deeply love because of everything that actually speaks to me. Also what she's talking about as well. A lot of times, a lot of plays that people send it to me and writing this, she keeps sending me um, I'm from Bosnia and Herzegovina. I Austria is not very foreigner place for me. <laughs> Probably Pavel Yurko, right? So um, Kelly, sorry, hi. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, so there's also for me cultural references as well. Uh, but not only that, I think the writing itself is so challenging. Like, how would you do with this, right? So Helga and I were meeting, and we were like, how we were like, how much performative, no performative, and we were like, let's just. Let's just, you were saying, let's just speak the language. Like, let's just go to the language. And I think for what we, how much time we had, I think, anyway. It will be interesting, like, what you do next with it. It was like, and I also have to say that I, when I work on Jackie, I was introduced to Yonik when I was in, um, when I was a student. So I didn't know Gita yet. So when, when Gita came to rehearsals with Jackie, that was complete revelation. Because then, then Gita was like, you can have fun with it. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your approach when you directed it. The text of Jelenic are pages full of words. Let deserts, we say in Germany, um, there's often, you know, indication who says what is it. Like, like on a novel, there's no difference in here. So how did you approach, for example, that work? And for the people who are listening or thinking, can I do a Jelenic or not? Most people say no. Most people who have never seen her work also would say when they get the script, they say this cannot be performed, but it yeah. can. So tell us a little bit, of what do you think of it? How did you approach it? Oh, I approach it very traditionally. So when I when I was pitching a show, because I didn't self-produce, I was pitching a show at the theater. So I was like, I was like, I was trying to convince them to take it. They were kind of, no, no. And I was doing all kinds of, wait, please have a look again, right? Because everybody were saying it's a poem. The, that's how it was looked at it, right? But um, I was able to convince them to do it. But how I did it is really traditionally, I break down all text analysis. So I knew every dot, <laughs> punctuation line in, in, the, in, the, in the writing. And, um, and then after that, I worked with Tina Benko. She also break down very traditionally. So, and then we were looking we were trying to find it in the space. I think just because how I am as a director, I always want to find it in the space. So we're finding it in the space. And of course we were not sure what we're doing, but then when Gita came and she says, oh, it all kinds of, a lot of things that Jelinek is interested in. It's of course Brechtian and it comes from this performative aspects and that totally like unlocked everything. <laughs> well, it's all, a lot of times I think like with Thomas Bernhard or, or German writers, uh, since they are usually first done in England and everything a British actor says sounds radiocated. It was with me and German actors and Austrians. But we Austrians are really funnier people than, uh, we, see, we think high literature and then we have to do something very special. But her language actually, although she has a very, um, the way she makes word, she does her word games, they are very sophisticated, but it's based totally on everyday language, everyday Viennese. And she actually, to, she's, she said Karl Kraus, the great uh, Austrian uh, satirist, was a big influence to her. And she's a totally normal person, a very well-bred Austrian, yeah, when she was a young lady, she was beautiful when she was young, she's still beautiful. But very well bred, how you, you know, you, she will serve you tea, that's all she can cook, she said. And you, the funniest thing was when, when they asked me, you must probably told it, uh, 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 the producer, Gilly Friede, can, can we, uh, will she do it? And I had a sense for that you guys can do this. And he charmed the hell out of her when he was at her house and he jumped on her table on the terrace. I'll never forget that. And she thinks you're the greatest genius. Well. Um, a quick question to you guys, how, how uh, to Pavel and Kelly, um, we just saw your film, a silent film, you know, with subtitles. How was it for you hearing the text? Well, Take um, the mic, uh, please. I mean, like I said, we read Gita's first 100 pages with alternate words for some of the, you know, it was just the color, color coded uh, yes. with, with uh, three words per one word of German, just uh, leaving herself options, which I felt like was wonderful to see a work, to see the work of the translator and 
in a way that that then that is also what we did. We translated it into the language, which is a different language, uh, language of cinema, language that we spoke, whether it's the lang also language of theater uh, and the landscape, and painting, any any other other languages. You know, there's just so much translation going on. So it was all all about. Um, versions, many different versions, and trying to, uh, in a way, creating a palimpsest of all that information that we were able to gather, including meeting with Elfrida and Gita, and you know, I think she loves Gita well, more than anybody in the world. <laughs> Let Kelly uh, also. No, it was also really um, important to us to realize that she, one of the biggest inspirations for her was this movie, this um, Carnival. Carnival of Souls by Kirk Carvey, which was a, an American B movie made with like, I think $5,000 on a weekend or something. Um, and it was about a, like a, an organist who doesn't know that she's dead. And so, I mean, it. I'm sure Elfrida identified heavily with that with that lead but it was interesting to know that she had like I, I really got from her that she she takes low and high from what totally. you and yeah she always says the phrase tone uh, the, the word that we have to know that as the <laughs> uh, to put the high down and the, and the low up that's what her favorite thing to do is Ours too. <laughs> and, and she always quotes that. She always says, yeah, you pull that down and that you put up. Yeah. Gita, for you a question before we come to the audience. What are the most successful translations, as Pavel said, of her work onto stage from the directors who you have seen so many of it? When does it work? Well, I get tired of directors now, especially men, who, you, sorry, who use her to do their vision of it. Now, her favorite director uh, had one, one where he, because she has a very specific hairdo, so he, they, he was having a wig, and then he was throwing it around and trampling on it. And that, to me, was just, to me, actually, Yossi Vila, who is yeah. a very traditional, but also... It's Angelus Nobus, right? Pardon me? Angelus Nobus book in Vienna. No, it's getting better, but Yossi, yeah. You have seen him, his yeah. work? Mm -hmm. He did Rechnitz, which is a very strong play. And, and he does it very fine. He, uh, he has both the, uh, the English theater. Well, he, was, he studied in Israel, actually. And then he came, he, yeah, he does it with, a, with the psychological approach. But like you, you do push it to another level. Mm -hmm. It's not just casual talking. You can't do that. Either you have a feeling for that, or you can't do that. It's harder to find in the American theater because we are so, we have to find the nice things in, in, in a character and it, it, it's not, <laughs> there's nothing nice to find in, a, in Frida's character. Mm. Yeah, I think Heiner Muller often said that uh, what he didn't like about state theater, that actors stand in front of the text, or they wear the text like a very expensive uh, bag, you know, from uh, Hermes, you know, showed off, but he says they should not stay in front of it, just show the text. He liked dialect because of that, like Brecht did, um, and actually, and um, and I think um, um, in the successful ways, trusting the text instead of saying we have to do something so people won't fall asleep, which is not true. But she sort of has her own group of act, I mean, actors who relate to her. By the way, the uh, actress in, uh, in the... Uh, the foreign movie that she wanted uh, about Hirsch in the concentration camp, who was also a nominee for the Oscar this year. She was in, in Frida's productions. Oh, she was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So let's come um, um, to some questions or observations um, of, uh, from the audience. Anything you want to say? Um, since we're on how long, we will use the microphone. Maybe you introduce shortly yourself. I want to talk about failure. Okay. <laughs> uh, we had this discussion, it's so fascinating. It may be a story the producer told me, but she told me that after a couple of rehearsals or a, a few weeks, you came to the producer's office and said, I'm going to direct this as a failure. And then there was a big thing, you can't do this. 
but even to do a silent movie is the most beautiful poetic answer to this. So that's so brilliant for how you, I can't get over it, how you <laughs> drag that out. And there's a scene in that movie when, when, the, when the person with the star of David and, and the swastika band, I heard there was, big, there was some controversy in, in Germany when you, when you saw that movie. And to me, it's the key. It's the, the key to the world it takes place in. If they were willing to play, yeah. Yeah. And of course, the palachin in the face. Yeah. <laughs> Gita, I want to ask you a question. What is it like for you to hear your text in the mouth of an African-American woman? I liked the storytelling. And I mean, that really, it was wonderful. It was, but then I don't come from a, con from a country which has that baggage. Mm -hmm. So for me, I, uh, it, was, it was great. And I liked, there's a little distance. And there was a, a I liked the, the the mystery which was in there, mm -hmm. so, and the music in your in your language and the quietness that's how she talks. I just I never uh, take for granted that it means something, in particular to an American audience to have well, a black that, woman <laughs> speaking a text that, technically doesn't belong to them. I, I for sure thought of it. I thought of what it would be to have this kind of um, dead coming back in our country. And and for me, that was a different kind of context. I think yeah. I thought about all those historical things. You also f not forget, but the Austrian is not that important. I think it brings in the universal of this, of this, the, 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 the dead coming back. Mm -hmm. And you pass it on to your to your children, and you can have the furies, and that is we only have to look at our world today. I was actually getting goosebumps how you three they really uh, captured something of today. But she has a name; she's called Cassandra in in Germany because she a lot of times her sensitivity sees uh, ahead of time, and I think her language sometimes gets into Cassandra's feet. But she's a very down to earth, great humor. She's she's <laughs> kind and generous, and you know people are always shocked when we tell them that because they, you know, there's that tradition in Austria of uh, nest beschmutzer or whatever. Yeah, that? so it's one and who the soils who, their nest. Yeah, and and uh, I guess she got a lot of unfair blowback for some of her work when well, she was critical of Austria. Mm -hmm. Austria well, Austria she Austria. attacked the Nazis. She yeah. and Thomas Bernhard I always yeah, compare. Yeah. And, and she just says it out. Yeah, mm -hmm. but people translate it into as a per that that is her personality trait. And she's very shy. Yeah. That's why they, you can't, they think she's arrogant. Yeah, yeah. And that she isn't at all, but she's extremely shy. That's not just an attitude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she's extremely smart, and that's that's smart. that's threatening. <laughs> so. But maybe let's see if there is any comment or question. Um, yeah. So one, and then two. Uh, hi, everybody. I, I wanted to ask if any of you saw uh, the uh, Isabella Huppert uh, 448 psychosis when it came to BAM, uh, the the uh, Claude Regis. In... So I saw it. Okay, because she. she uh, as you you remember, she didn't move. No, she didn't I move remember, yeah. An inch. Mm -hmm. She just stood there yeah. and delivered the text. There was a scrim behind her, and there was a guy there, but he didn't say anything either. And uh, this beautiful uh, performance, Helga, I, I, it struck me that maybe uh, this was a, a way into this wall of language that Yelinek is uh, uh, providing, you know, just, just the yeah. actor. Um, no. I'm sorry I didn't see your film. I wish I could have. I had to teach, but I, I would love to have seen what you did. But it, it, this, it just, this is just a reaction. And I wonder if this isn't maybe an, uh, an approach. You know, you just, just the stasis maybe could be helpful and let, let just the, the, the voice and an attitude and the words come. I don't know. It's just what No, it, it is, I think, the key to this. 
because this dissipates and distracts you from what what the text is. So I I couldn't I had to move a little bit because my hair was in the text and I couldn't see it. But in general, it's my favorite way to be on stage is to just be mm. still. And I think a lot of that is my working with Bob Wilson also, who really demands that you just be still. And to you, by the way, the film will be in the F Siegel Film Festival for two weeks uh, available and we will get those to see it. Sorry, and stillness not just in the body, but inside, still and quiet. Mm -hmm. This is more a comment. Thank you so much. Uh, that you know, I've I've listened to Elfrida through my mother, and um, sometimes the language is so abstract that it's hard. And I felt that there was a spiritual connection when you asked about the African American connection to it. I'm not quite sure what that was because it tr you transform. It, I wasn't mm -hmm, seeing. Mm -hmm. I felt it too. What I was feeling was the soul and the spirit, which I think this language at times can negate, which you you could easily go uh, histrionic or yeah. a different way, but to understand the silence that you said, it really moved me. And I just wanted to share that with you. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. that was not to try to make her more accessible, but just have that tone. Yeah, that was very beautiful. I gave it to my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> she loves you, you know that. Anyway, we get it's a family affair today. We can say these things. One more or two, and just to say to you, you know, race is never, ever, ever a casual thing, mm -hmm. and that the work always seems to be to find a spiritual connection. In whatever you do, it doesn't mean I am not angry. It doesn't mean that I'm not all the things that a, a human on this planet can be. But I do not ever, ever, ever think it's casual to hear an African American person without any text. And so this is also part of the joke for me to stand, first of all, to be called Helga. What's more funny than that? Uh, and then to <laughs> see, it's funny. And uh, no one is ever looking for me. And that this, this could also, as I said, be seen as a text that doesn't belong to me. And it completely belongs to me. Yeah, yeah. But it is, it's the weird thing that people either connect and really get something. So how do they get yeah. that? Yeah. Okay the language or the spirit, I mean, there's a spirit yeah. here, which you either accept or you don't. Yeah, then I would say, you know, um, uh, really thank you for coming, really thank you for this, um, first of all to Helga for this exquisite reading with Tia Clifford from the language you, you translated. So I thought it was a very, very special reading. We do a lot mm -hmm. of readings here at the Seagull. Some of you guys come here, mm -hmm. this is, it really was um, a sublime uh, rendition also of an actor of a text. In, so thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for HowlRound um, for having us. Thank you.